Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, and Cheryl, it has been quiet until now, so you might not have heard anything. We had our microphones muted, uh, but we are here now. So you guys who are in the chat, go ahead and change the little two box where it says all panelists right now. Uh, it probably just says all panelists. Go ahead and change that to all panelists and attendees so that we can all see what each other is saying. And I'll show you a little screenshot of that in just a second. So yeah, y'all let us know where you're coming from. And um, we're so glad you're here with us today. This has really saved our sanity this week to have you guys to talk to and, um, and to just be able to see somebody outside of our own homes. It's been really great. So thank you so much for tuning in again. So today we're gonna to be talking about developing activities for your online classroom. I mean, none of us wants to have a classroom that is just uh, worksheets, but sometimes we resort to that when we don't know what else to do. So today is about figuring out what else can we do that is not resorting to an online worksheet, which we know is not very engaging, you know, might not be as educational as we want. Um, so we just wanted to share a lot of different ideas with you. So I want to let everybody introduce themselves. I'm Amy Mayer, and I'm with Fred Technology, and Brooke, you're on. Hey, I'm on. I'm also reading all the names and people that are popping in here. I know. And from all the places. It, I know it just takes us a minute to see where everybody is from, and this is so awesome. I love that you guys are putting this in and adding it all in here. It's so great. But hey, I'm Brooke from Fry Technology. Good morning. It's Friday. Yay. Or fry yay. Fry yay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't feel much like it, but it is. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys let me, you let um let us know if you stop hearing me. I am in Houston, Texas, and right now at my house it is um has decided to come quite a storm. So we're gonna hope that my computer and internet holds out through this. Yes, same, same. Yes, it's raining pretty hard here too. I'm Jessica. I also work here with Fried Technology. Uh, I'm an ELA teacher and I sometimes forget that I used to teach Rugrats, but um, <laughs> middle school is not easy to forget. So I think it might be PTSD. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, no kidding. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and get started because uh, I know why you're here today. You want to get some new ideas and maybe share some new ideas also. This is that screenshot that I promised you. Um, if you're in the chat right now, make sure that you are changing that little two area that's in the picture here, whoops, inside the red box. Make sure you change that to all panelists and attendees because some of you guys are telling us where you're from, but everybody else is not seeing that because it's only going to the panelist. So change that and make sure that when you're talking, you're talking to the group you want to talk to. If you just want to send something to us, of course you can, yeah. um, but you probably want to talk to everybody here because that makes it a lot more fun. We've really enjoyed seeing what everybody has to say this week. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, we have two more webinars coming up next week. Uh, we're actually starting to work with schools again online. And um, I don't, I know, hopefully you guys don't even think of us as a company, uh, but we are a company and, you know, we, we all get paid every month in order to do this, this job. I mean, personally, it's my favorite job I've ever had. I love doing it. Almost doesn't feel like work, but you know, then people want things like the mortgage. So uh, we're going back to work next week um, online. We obviously can't be in your schools like we normally are, but that's what we're doing. So if your school district is looking for help, please remember us because we are here still trying to make a living like we normally do. We're just doing everything online now. Um, so this is what we're doing for free next week. We're going to try to keep doing this as long as everybody needs it. Uh, so on Monday, we're having, we, we asked earlier this week in a webinar, um, do you, hey, do you guys want us to do a Google Classroom webinar? And the responses came in so fast, like Brooke and I, like our eyes were spinning trying mm -hmm. to read them because it was yes, 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 yes. So uh, we're going to do that on Monday. However, this is what we know. We know that we've got to ask you guys what you need uh, because what we don't want to do is do a webinar with what we think you need and it is not actually what you need. So on this slide that you're looking at right now, it is on our blog also. So if you go to our website, fried.tech, and then click on blog, it's the very top entry there. And these links are clickable. 
on that blog. You can go to the needs assessment link. Please fill that out and let us know what you need to know. There's some questions Jessica's put on there to help you realize what you need to know. Because if you're thinking, well, I don't know what I need to know. Well, there's something, some guidance there to help you. And then there's also the registration link for the Google Classroom um, event. We're expecting it to probably be our biggest one yet. And um, we only have 500 seats. Um, so sign up for that if you want to attend it. And then on Wednesday, we're gonna be working with Pear Deck. Uh, Pear Deck is an amazing tool that you can use for distance learning. And they have developed a brand new um, slide deck that they're gonna be showing us on Wednesday next week. And someone from our team who is a Pear Deck expert is going to be on that call. And I'll be on that call too, so that we can walk through Pear Deck together. Uh, we're gonna learn it from the ground up, but they're also gonna show us some ways to use it when you're not in the same classroom together. Awesome. Um, yeah, so that's gonna be really cool. All right, good question. Someone asked, I saw just now, what about the ones we've already done? Well, these are the archived webinars that we have already done. Those are on our blog too. This slide is just embedded in that blog post. And again, these are all clickable. So like if I move my mouse over these boxes under the URL part, you can just click right there when you're looking at this on our blog and you can see any of those archived recordings that we have done earlier this week. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Don't forget to ask questions. Um, Brooke and Jess are gonna be doing most of the talking today. And so I'm gonna be monitoring that chat. And um, when we get to a good stopping point, then I will let them know what questions you guys have. So we're going to give you these slides. Uh, we ask you today not to navigate away from these, this webinar right now. Um, for, your, for your best learning experience, stick with us today live in the video that's going to let you ask the questions that you need to ask and then at the end we're going to give you the URL to this slide deck that's going to have all of the templates in it you're going to see today um, so go back to the video that we're doing that we're creating right now later and look at those templates in the context of the video but right now today just watch with us stay with us because if you start working on the first thing we show you you're not gonna learn any of the other stuff that we're gonna show you today. And we need, we need you to ask your questions that you're gonna have. I think that's right. something that makes like PD kind of overwhelming for people um, in general. I think you guys would agree with this, is you just sit back and, and kind of take it all in and just rely on the fact that you're gonna have the video to go back to. Um, you don't have to worry right. about you know, trying to recreate things right away. And I think that's where people get hung up on when they go to PD, don't you agree? Yeah, I totally agree. And I, I, I tell people all the mm -hmm. time, I'm gonna say this to you three times. The first time, I just want you to listen and watch. The second time, you might be ready to try it. If you're not, then we'll try it together the third time. And um, so this video is our first time and our second time because you can control this when you go back to it later. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, all right, so Jess, you are gonna start us off talking about an educational use for canvas.apps.chrome. Do you want me to show my little example of what the tool is first? Yeah, let's go. Let's start with that so people can kind of get an idea. So okay. while she's pulling that up, guys, um, I'm in some Facebook groups for teachers that are struggling with what to do with their students while you guys are in distance learning mode. And a lot of math teachers are expressing some, you know, concern that they don't feel like they have the tools available to them for the students to show what they know uh, in a meaningful cool. way. And so the idea that I have is that you can use this application and it's completely web based. You don't have to have anything downloaded on your device. It's the Chrome Canvas app. So the way you get there, Amy, can you magnify the uh, web address? And it's I, on the slide too. I don't know if y'all can see my magnifier. Oh, you the, can't. In the I video. I don't it. think you can. Yeah. But, no. um, but it is on the slide. It's it is. It's canvas.apps.chrome. If you're on a Chromebook, uh, it will prompt you to add it to your shelf, which is a great little shortcut to the application. And it looks like this. It is just like a whiteboard space, uh, except it has some kind of, I would say, more advanced features than just the mm -hmm. typical whiteboard space because it does have layers. So Amy has a, a drawing here. Um, but in a math application, my, my thought would be the students can use Screencastify and can record themselves um, 
solving a math problem, talking through the math problem. So Amy, show us what you've designed. This is not a math application, of course, no, but no. it definitely gives you an <laughs> overview of the features. Now, this is just kind of a fun thing. So uh, my car's name is Mimi Bobek, and Mimi Bobek is a character from a 90s TV show, The Drew Carey Show, and she's one of my favorite TV characters ever. And so what I did to kind of show how this tool has layers and what the layers do, um, when I started, so when I was at the home button back here for Canada, I did new from image this button in the top left and I uploaded a picture I found online of this um, this actress and character for Mimi Bobek so I'm gonna go back to the original layer I'm gonna turn off each of the layers that I made as I drew the character and the white background and you'll see this is how I started so I started on top of the drawing and this let me kind of draw on top so you can see there's the hair and each time I got ready to add a new color or a new something to the picture I just added another layer with this plus sign up here so that as I built the drawing um, you know I got a, a total drawing and then I added this white layer so I just made a a layer and I moved it you can drag these layers around I moved it to be right over top of the picture so when I turn the white layer on it covers up the picture and we've just got our line drawing so if you're trying to teach art also from home and you want kids to be experimenting with drawing this has multiple different tools in it they're really really neat uh, it has the ability to change the size and the opacity which is it's pretty advanced stuff there, like the hair I drew with chalk um, because I wanted it to have that kind of, you know, cotton candy look like this character's hair does. Um, cotton candy, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great way to describe it. But Jess, I want to see your example because you have a math example, don't you? Oh, well, I haven't made it. I was going to make it on screen if that was okay. Yeah, yeah, um, do it. So I, you may, let me share my screen. That's probably yeah, what I should Yeah, do. go ahead. Okay. I'll have to wait till you unshare. I'm glad that we decided that because I was just thinking the same thing. Oh, I need to share mine when we do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's perfect. Let's do this. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yes. So I have gone to Chrome Canvas and I don't have anything yet uh, in this account. So if I click get started, um, we're going to see where first I guess I have to log in if I'm not already logged in. Let's do that. Oh, the bane of my existence, isn't it? Logging into things. Mm -hmm. At right. least you had everything saved though. That's true. Okay, I thought I had done some things. So for instance, here is an example. I just clicked on new drawing. It's a blank white background and I can use, if I have a touchscreen device like my Chromebook has a touchscreen, it's awesome for writing with your fingertip. If I'm an elementary student and I'm practicing handwriting, if I'm an elementary student and I need to solve a problem and show my teacher. Um, you open this app and then you can choose your tool and let's say you ask the students to solve an equation. And I'm doing this with my keyboard, so you guys just bear with me. And I'm also not very good at math, but you guys are going to be like... I'm pretty excited that she went with something difficult. I know. Is that an X? That's difficult what for me. Heck? There's an X. Anytime you throw in the alphabet into math, it just got difficult. Like, <laughs> <laughs> the CLA teacher struggles I'm sure. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, so here, Jeez. what's the thing? I got, I really want to monitor my, my students understand the process, not really that they get the right answer. That's, that's secondary to understanding the process, right? Because when they understand the process, they can move further along with math. So let's say we give the students math problems and we ask them to solve them. They use Chrome Canvas to start this process and they just have to activate Screencastify. So all they have to do is put that, if they have that extension in their Chrome browser, they can go ahead and uh, record their desktop or record their browser tab, make sure their mic is working. And so I'm going to go ahead and just do my browser tab and record. It's going to count me down. Okay, 4x plus 3 equals 16. And I know I need to isolate the 4x part. I forget what that's called. I think my teacher said it was a coefficient maybe. So I know to get that part of the problem isolated, I have to first take away 3 over here. And that means I have to do the same thing on this side of the equal sign. So now I'm going to be balancing this out. You guys should say ooh and ah as I get this. Oh, right. I'm so impressed. Ooh, it is. I'm very <laughs> impressed. And so now I have 4x <clears throat> equals 13. And I got to get the x by itself. And so since it's 4 times x, I know I need to do the opposite thing. So 4 divided by 4. And then I got to do it on the same side. 
Okay, so you guys get the picture, right? So I'm talking through the problem. I'm saying why I'm doing certain things, trying to use my math terminology if I know it. Obviously, I don't. Sorry, math teachers. But now I've recorded this, I'm going to hit stop on Screencastify. And it's going to generate my video. It took me just a few seconds. And this is the thing I'm going to turn in to my teacher. Instead of sending the Chrome canvas to my teacher, I'm going to send the video of myself solving the problem. And so now my problem, my teacher can hear me talking through my process and understanding where I have some misconceptions and figuring out where I'm making some mistakes. And that way, my teacher has something they can work with. That's awesome. So that's my biggest contribution to this conversation is that math teachers, you don't have to feel like you can't <laughs> use the Google tools because we have some that work for you. Yes, love it. Thanks so much for demonstrating that, yeah, no Jessica. Problem. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, who are we going to next? Brooke, is it you up next? It may be. I don't want to screen share again if it's your turn. Yeah, wanna... let me. I'm looking are... No, it's me. Sure. It's me. It's me. I'm back. It's you. I can, I can it's screen you. share you again. Yeah. Okay. I just so. need everyone to know that we have one math teacher, Bailey, in our chat who is ready to tutor me. I think. I don't think I'm, she signed up for the job. I, I, you know what I found out, Brooke? If you put dollar signs <laughs> in math problems, they make perfect sense. It makes more sense. <laughs> so I just much like sense. that people oohed and odd in the chat. So yes, they that, did. Guys. I need that you. affirmation. <laughs> yes, it just really does make life so much better, doesn't it? Okay, um, I love this idea for math teachers also, but also for lots of other teachers. And that is the fact that you can assign a blank slide in Google Classroom, and then you can have your students insert their paper work. So what they can do is go to insert image and camera, and then they can take a picture. So this is my quote unquote work that I did earlier today. And I can snap a picture of that work and insert it into the slide. And then I can turn in my work that is on a piece of paper. So I always show people how to use the image format options in slides to get this to be the most readable that it can be. So let me show you how to do that. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to double click the picture and that's going to initiate my crop handles. That's those, let me make this bigger so you can see it better. That's those black handles. And when I pull on these black handles and I get my mouse just in the right place, I'll be pulling in the edges of this picture so that what you're going to be left with is whatever I have drawn or written on the paper. And I have to get my mouse in just the right spot to do this, but there it is. And then I can make this bigger. I can make it fill the page. This is eight and a half by 11. That's what my slide is set to. And then I can also go into my format options and into the adjustments. And I can change the contrast. Usually I turn up the contrast. And a lot of times it works to turn up the brightness. In this case, it looks like it's almost too bright. I can turn it down a little bit. But through using these tools and even sometimes the recolor, you can make your work a lot more legible. Um, so I didn't really take the world's best picture right there. It could definitely be better, but hopefully you get the picture that if we want kids to draw something on a piece of paper, make a diagram, uh, write something out, you know, sometimes writing is still the best way, but now we can't just walk over to them and take the piece of paper from them, we're going to have to get the piece of paper somehow. So of course they can just upload a photo. But I like this idea because mm -hmm. we don't, we're not just stuck with one photo. We can have directions on a slide. We can have multiple pictures. Um, so we can get a lot more information. Yeah, a marker or a darker pen, Candace, does make yep. it much better. I should have You know what's that. great, Amy, is that because you took a picture of paper that you wrote on, you can, if the picture doesn't turn out, you just take a new picture. Exactly. Right? Turn, on, turn exactly. on some more lighting. Or if it just needs to be rewritten, we'll just rewrite it because, you know, it's paper. You can do that. Right. And also, if I had taken this with my cell phone, it would actually be a much better quality picture than the one that I took. And, and Jess is right, if I had taken it in better lighting, it also would have been better. So I just wanted you guys to see the, the concept. And hopefully that concept makes sense that you can, you can still have students turn in a piece of paper by using insert image camera, even if all they have at home is their Chromebook. Amy, yeah. one bonus to this is you can have students share this 
project with their partners and their partners can use things like the shape tool to annotate on top of it. Yes, great idea. Let me show you what Jess is talking about. So for example, if I want to highlight a word or something on this paper, I can just get a shape. Let me make it darker so you guys can see it better. I can get a shape and I can actually do something on top of this assignment. Once you've got a shape, then if you get another shape, it's going to have the same characteristics of the shape you just got. So I changed that so that the middle of it was um, transparent and it had a big dark red background. So then the next shape I get while I have that one clicked is going to have the same characteristics. So yeah, that's a great idea just to have students do peer editing with this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, love that idea. All right. Are, have you guys noticed any other questions? That um, need to be somebody's one? hearing music. Someone's hearing music. I'm not. Might be the rain. It may be. Maybe I don't Might hear be. it here. Um, um, another thing about taking the picture that I love to showcase is the fact that when they use the picture through this platform, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't save anywhere on their computer. It just saves directly into the slide. So not only is it less clicks of taking a picture, uploading the picture, downloading the picture, it goes directly in there. But not only for paper, but if you're having your kids maybe create things out of Legos because they're doing a hands-on project, or you're having them create something that they're going to be using on the desk, or even for our PE teachers that are having them do activities, maybe you want to show, have them snap a picture of them doing a push-up or whatever it is that they're turning in. They can do it in the same format. It doesn't have to be a piece of paper that they're taking the picture of and still put it into the slide. Yeah, great point. Um, I know that our colleague Alicia, um, her daughter right now is working from home. She's in, ki in kindergarten and a lot of what she's doing is with manipulatives. So she could take mm -hmm. a picture of what she's done with the manipulatives right. and put that into the slide or just upload the picture. But I think it'd be easier to put it into the slide. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. I'm going to stop sharing now because I think that we're definitely going to someone else. And yep, the very next me. thing in our deck is interactive notebooks. So my favorite oh. words to say, it's Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then interactive notebooks. I'm so glad you feel that way, that that's your favorite thing to say. I love we it might, when it's Brooks to view. We might need to talk about that. <laughs> uh, Brooke is Jessica's boss, in case y'all didn't know, so uh, well, we all love to give each other we, work. <laughs> we are definitely way more all of us a team than we are anything else, so that makes it way easier. Yeah, that's for real, because y'all gave me so much work yesterday, I had to write it all down. I had to... I know. Oh, and it, <laughs> it felt so good too. It did. I want you to know I bragged about that later last night. I was talking about it. I was like, all of us have so much to do. All of us. Uh -huh. All of us. So, that is for real. Okay, let's get started. Yeah, let's get started on digital interactive notebooks. I'm going to try not to take the rest of the webinar to talk about this. I will try to keep it. Um, light because this is one of my very favorite things to talk about and to work with inside of Google Slides. I was a huge interactive notebook user in my class. Uh-oh, we're losing Brooke. Yep, we're losing you, she Brooke. just got um, real slow. Maybe she'll come back in a second. Like there she class. goes. This is so sad. Okay. <laughs> Do y'all hear yes, me yet? You're back. Okay. Yes, you're back now. So I'm back. Okay. All right. I'm just. Uh oh, she went drunk. It. Somebody said. <laughs> <laughs> Quarantine just got real. <laughs> okay. Are we good? Yeah. Are keep we, going. Are you're good. I'm on back. Okay. All right. So instead of doing all the cutting, the folding, and the gluing, instead of doing all of that, we're going to talk about making our graphic organizers in Google Slides. So the first thing I want to showcase is if you're looking at my slides, you're probably thinking, that doesn't look like Google Slides. That's because I've changed my page size, which is very easy to do. You just go into File, and then Page Setup. And normally, it is <laughs> this is hilarious. Why? It is because she does sound drunk. 
being benign. If but I've clicked on the word custom. Slowly, they're getting in front of y'all may have to do it. Yeah. Yeah, we might, bro. Do you guys need to do this instead of me? Yeah, we keep losing okay. you. Yeah, I think I'll let me share. You know what? I might can talk through. Yeah, if maybe if you're not shares. sharing. I, I just yeah. stop sharing. I may be able to talk through it. If you share it, it may be pulling too much. Yeah, okay, I just right. shared. Tell me which one to open, Brooke. Um, I'm sharing now. Go to our slideshow. Okay. Go to the next slide. Um, yeah. Oh, that's All gonna right. make you make a copy. If you refresh yours, I think it's hidden. Oh, well, it doesn't matter. You have to make a copy either way. Yeah, it'll load in a second. Yeah. What okay. this is good for Let's you guys who are watching it. is that when you get to see the slide deck, you can make a copy of this too. That's, that's the best right. part. Right. Absolutely. Yes, You're you gonna will get be able these to get slides. To copy. All right, bro. Okay. Tell me what to do. Let's try so. that again. All right. So the first thing that I always do is I go into my page setup and I change my canvas size. And there's a main reason why main reason why I do that is because I utilize the gray space. And that's the side the gray space is on the left and the right side of a Google slide. So I can actually add items into the gray space. And when my students make a copy of a slide deck, anything that's in the gray space comes with it. So for years, I spent a lot of time making my instructions and my directions like 0 0.3, 0 0.4 font and made them zoom in to read it because I wanted them to have as much work space as they could on the slide. And then finally, I was like, wait, we can just put this in the gray space and it will go with them. So if they have this in Google Classroom and it's set to anyone with the link can copy or uh, make a copy for every student, anything that's in that gray space, the students will be able to see. So I can put my videos over there, I can put my directions, and you're gonna see here in a few minutes, I've put some manipulatives over into the gray space that they're gonna pull into their slide. So for this first one here, this is just a simple vocabulary graphic organizer. This is probably something that you've seen on paper before. Um, we've asked our students to fill in this and they turn it back into us and we look at it and they handwrite it. But instead now we're flipping it into the digital space. So I've added in some color shapes just to make it a little bit more visually interesting. My f the best thing to teach students to do though Instead of adding a text box into the shape, instead of going in and clicking in the toolbar and adding a text box, all they have to do on any shape that you have put into a graphic organizer or onto a slide is double click it. And the moment you double click any shape, it automatically turns that shape into a text box. So Brooke, would it be safe to say that all shapes are text boxes? Yeah, they are. Yep, you just double click on it and it automatically turns and um, lets you start typing directly in there. Yeah, it's great. So cool. Awesome. Yeah, some people were excited about that. So that's yes. good. good. <clears throat> and this um, is called the Frayer model. Yes. I was reminded by someone in the chat. So that sounds real fancy. I like to call it that. It does. Yeah. I'm always impressed when teachers know the names of things. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I always forgot. Them. Yeah, exactly. So we have a few of these in here. Amy, will you go to the next one? Yes, I will. I was just answering a question. Are we recording? Oh, and the answer is yeah. yes, we are recording. Okay. So um, this is the same thing here. I've add some, and guys, I left these very blank for you to put your own content in. I know sometimes as teachers, the moment we see something in social studies format, we're like, oh, it's social studies. I can't use you that. Know, so, yeah. yeah, so I like to try to keep my examples pretty blank of content so that your mind, your teacher, wonderful minds can start to think about exactly how you could use that in your classroom. So here you can just replace the title, <clears throat> Um, add some information and then use the web that's down here below. Um, also, the squiggle line up here at the top is just using the scribble tool that's in the lines. Um, just, just a little fancy graphic there. So you it, just went up here sure. and got this scribble mm -hmm. tool, bro. Went to scribble. And then you just changed the color and the yeah. width. Yeah, I think it's probably. Oh, on. I'm changing. I'm changing my my title. But you just did that with the scribble tool, and then you just drew. Yep, and oh. then changed the width, and then stuck it behind the top. Okay, cool. Just a quick little makes it look a little more interesting. So it sure does. I like All that. Right. It looks fancy. 
I think this next one has some pullovers. Let's see. Yep. So here's a note taking idea. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I still love post-it notes. And I also like post-it notes because of their size. So I can get just a few things on there to, um, and I think that's great for note taking with kids. Sometimes it's not about the whole page. It's about the small condensed areas. So I've created these little fake digital post-it notes over here using shapes. And I grouped them together whoops. and all this whoops and all the students have to do is pull them over if you put the task on the square so this says task for note mm -hmm. example find and describe so maybe you would finish this out with their task find and describe a word that maybe you didn't know in the reading selection they would go to the left and pick a note to put over that square, over that task, and they would fill it in with the information, answering whatever the task or the question is that's underneath it. Oh, it's upside down. It is. I need to fix that. All right. That one well, that you may have to have them put the text box in. Because <laughs> then it's going to mess up the whole thing. Yeah. You may have to put a text box in. It's not cute that anymore. One. Those are the... Those are the those are the those are the small tricks of Google Slides that I flipped that upside down and now your words are going to be upside down. All right. Amy's going with it though. Typing upside down is educational, I said. I like it. You don't know, I could be learning something right now. All right. Here we Teachers go. Teachers might the students might really enjoy that too. This is the same thing, same concept. It's a little bit smaller and this one's not flipped upside down. So this should work for you as well. Um, well have them ask a task or a question, a task or a question on one of these. They can answer in any of the color slots to the left or the right and then drag them over to fill that space as well. Oh, I like how you made it kind of transparent. Mm -hmm. That way they can see through it. Yeah. Okay. Huh. That's, that's a cool idea. I haven't ever thought of doing that before because then you can actually see what they're answering underneath mm -hmm. there. Huh. That's cool, Brooke. And then this one is for like, we have kids all the time do these reports. And I know that I have done a ton of poster boards in my life. So this is kind of like a digital report, um, digital report, a digital book report, a poster board. So the difference on this one is instead of needing the students to ask me a hundred questions, questions. I have actually added little how-to tutorials for using word art, how to create a hyperlink, um, how to add a video, how to insert an image, and then also the Screencastify webpage for them to create a video on their own. So this is also now getting a little deeper, a little more complex than just the graphic organizers. They're going to go through and learn how to create each of those things to fill out their student report on whatever the subject is that I've given them. So, Brooke, do you mind if we spend a second going through, like, what, how to insert word art yeah. and how to make a hyperlink? Sure. Okay. So, um, this tells me to make word art, and if I don't know how, I can click right here and I can watch this video. But word art, in case you haven't used it before, is words that are a shape. So, I can type in the little box and it gives me you know, gives me a place to put my text. But once I hit enter, my text turns into a shape. It's no longer text. It's now a picture. And so I can control it like I can a picture. I can control the size of it. Um, and when I drag the corners, it shifts to adjust to that space. And then a hyperlink if you don't know how to do it, you're going to be able to click right here and your students are going to be able to click right there and see that. There's a bunch of different ways to make hyperlinks. So remember Brooke said that all text box are already, I mean all shapes are already text boxes. So even if this is a, a shape instead of a text box, I can type. So one way I can do this is I can just paste in the hyperlink. So for example, if I go to our website, and I go up into this Omni box, this long white space at the top. I can click up there. I can right click and copy or hold down control and press C and that will copy the hyperlink. And then when I come back to my interactive notebook, I can just paste that hyperlink in and see how it showed up 
in this teal color and underlined, well, it's a hyperlink, it works. If somebody comes into this and they click this, they're gonna be able to see this. But that's not very aesthetically pleasing um, and it doesn't let me know what I'm going to. So instead, I could do this with words. I could say, um, click here to go to fried tech. So now I can select the words, use the hyperlink button, paste the hyperlink with control V into the link space and apply. And now this has the same characteristics as this. It just looks a little cleaner. And I could also do that same thing with a picture or with word art. So if I wanted to use word art, I can click on the word art, use the hyperlink button, paste in the hyperlink, apply, and now the words are linked. The word art is linked to the website. Yep. All right, Brooke, you want to talk through adding a video? Um, sure. So if you want to add a video, one of the best ways is using a video from YouTube or any video that you have a URL link to. So you're going to go to the insert menu. Actually, Amy, can you click off of that square for us real quick? Sure. The reason I had Amy click off of the square, this is a Google Slides pro tip. If she had inserted a video or an image while having that square selected, it would bring in the properties of that square into whatever she's inserting. Oh, that's so like right. Video would have a border. Your image will have a border. Your text would have a border. So um, a lot of people all the time are like, where did this border come from? Make right. sure you have nothing selected when you're inserting something new. So that was a good moment. Unless you want there. the properties right. of it in for some reason. Yes, unless you want it, which sometimes I do. So, in so you're going to go to the insert menu. I'm trying to do it with my mouse and it's not working. Um, go oh, down Amy's to doing video. It. I was like, Why isn't your mouse yeah. Working? <laughs> no. <laughs> and then here you have the option to just directly search YouTube, but I always preview videos. So a lot of times, unless I know exactly the name of it, I usually am going to paste it by the URL. Or if it's already in my Google Drive, I will be able to find it there as well, which is where your Screencastify videos will also be. So and just in case you guys have this problem, <laughs> I've been getting this question a lot lately. Um, people are making Screencastify videos and then they're not processing in Google Drive. So yes, that's happening. It's happening to everyone. I think it's just because everybody over, yeah. over the whole entire world is using Google Drive right now. Well, Sharon um, McMichael um, put an update in the chat earlier when you were talking, so you get, probably didn't get a chance to see it, that Google has identified the problem. Oh, with, good. And uh, Screencastify tweeted out that they're working on it and it should be fixed soon. Can oh, we just take a second awesome. to be so thankful for these companies that have really honestly put their resources oh, yeah. into supporting what we're doing because they don't have to. And that's the best part. I mean, they've got higher traffic than ever before on these sites and yep. these programs, and they've definitely dedicated the time to make sure they're working, which is awesome. Right, right. Mm -hmm. and, and even Google, like Jess and I had this long conversation yesterday, and we even tried some things out to try to figure out the Hangouts Meet problem everybody's having where kids can get back into a Hangouts Meet. So we talked through all this. She wrote up an email, carefully explained the problem that teachers were having, sent it off to our contact at Google. And uh, last night, a blog post was put out by Google that solves the problem and explains exactly how to solve the problem. So, yes. I mean, we were both just like, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it was so fast that turnaround was. I was like, whoa, yeah. okay, they are working on it. So cool. So I'm just going to click on this video that, I want to put into the slide and click select and then the video is going to pop in and then I can size it down just like it's a picture. I can pull the corner down and I can put it into my space right here. You got anything to add to that, Brooke or Jess? No, nope, that's pretty much it. Okay. I mean, I think they're really, we have several questions asking about background. Those are coming very soon. So as soon as we move from this one, you guys are going to be blown away by, I think, some of this thoughts. So. And then, Brooke, can we make um, sure, I don't know if we'd planned on it, but can we make sure we talk to them about how they can give this to students through classroom and how the kids can continue adding slides? Um. That's been questioned in the group a lot. You know what? Yeah, come to, we come may to need the to classroom make a, on yeah, Monday. The yeah, Google there Classroom. You go. Yeah. Well, come to the Google Classroom and that one we'll we'll address that there as well. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so this next slide on slide six. This is one of um, this is kind of where some of you have already already been asking this question about matching and sorting and and you're gonna see a couple 
and um, this is an elementary example, but I used this, I was a geography teacher and I used this a lot of using dragging and matching and adding different words together and putting things. So think of it outside of this elementary concept here for my secondary friends. So what we've added to grab the images and drag them into the boxes to match. Um, I made this one a little more difficult for them. They're going to have to realize how many um, there's only enough animals to fill the spots. Yeah, so, I started to drag the dog over before right. I realized that only the mouse, the mouse is the only one that only has three. <laughs> yeah. So I made it a little more difficult for them to have to really think through, oh wait, there's not, there's too many bees. Or there's too many dogs or there's not enough dogs to fill that. And then on the right hand side to switch it up a little bit more, they can drag just the number into the boxes. So the next question that's going to come from you from everybody in the chat is, okay, but they're going to mess up my formatting. They're going to mess up the background. And yep, they are because it's not that they mean to, it's that their little hands on those track pads or even if they're using a mouse, sometimes grab those images. And when I say little hands, I'm also talking about my big hands because <laughs> sometimes even when I'm creating something, I'm like, oh, I didn't mean to move that box or oh, I hate that I just moved that, I've got to move it back. So let's talk very quickly, Amy, if you'll go to slide seven, about how you can fix this. So when you get yours, I've made a, when you guys get your copy later, I've made a set the background template for you to practice. So in Google Slides, you can set the background by downloading your slides as an image. And what's wonderful about this is, is that you can decide what is still interactive from the student side and what you want to be set on the teacher side. This is the biggest part of the rules though. You want to create a slide deck that is for you, the teacher slide deck. I always name mine like templates so that I have all of the working pieces and then I make a student slide deck that I'm going to share. And the reason I do that is because I want to make sure that if there's a mistake, I don't have to go back and recreate the entire slide. I can just jump over into my template slide deck and make the change and re-download the image and put it in here. Um, for a while, I was just deleting the template slide because once it was set, it was good to go. But if you ever want to go back and make any chance, uh, changes, you have to start all over. So yeah, what Amy's going to do, tip. she's going to show it live. Um, what we've done is I've made a table. I've added the words that I want to stay in here. And then Amy's going to show you how to go to file and then download. And then yeah, as a PNG, and it's going to download that image file to her computer. And it's just that one slide. It doesn't make all of the slides. It's just going to be that one slide. And now we're going to go to, now notice on her toolbar up here at the top, there's no longer fonts or any other type of information. She can click on the word background and then choose image. And she's going to upload that image that she just downloaded. And it was still at the bottom, so I just dragged it over there. That's great. And now make sure you don't do add to theme. If you click add to theme, it's going to set that background as the theme to every single slide in the slide deck. So Amy, can you pull those words out of the box now on that one? No, I can't do anything because yeah, it's so just the background. It's all there. But notice that her little animals are now missing from the left-hand side. So she'll have to go grab those animals and move them into the student slide deck, which is not a big deal. And then a finalized one, if she'll skip on to the next slide. Here I've added in a video that's going to teach the students what each of the animals are in Spanish so that they can watch the video and then add the animals as they see them into their, their chart. I know I, that Somebody one. said that it was, oh, you know. <laughs> Mexican food, yes. <laughs> I, somebody commented that um, it seems like a lot of steps, but here's the thing. Like what, it might yeah. seem like a lot of steps right now it's because fast. it's all new, but once you've done it once or twice, it becomes so easy to do. Um, and by making the picture, the background, not just making the background into a picture like we did before with the download, but by also going into the slide and setting it as the background, they can't delete mm -hmm. the whole thing. So a lot of teachers stop with, I downloaded it as a picture and then I put that picture back on the slide. And they yeah. don't think about making it the background. Set it to the background. Yep. It makes, it really makes a difference. And, and like you just said, Jess, once you do it a couple times, it becomes such just second nature to do it. It only takes a few clicks. Well, and if your kids are 
if you're teaching small children and they're working at home on a computer, they're, they probably don't have any tech support because their parents are probably right. working too. And they need you to do everything that you can do to make it user friendly for them. So that's, that's why you want to take the time to learn that skill. It's not going to take you long to learn, but it's going to save them a lot of time. So for my secondary people, we're going to show this real fast and then we're going to move on. We have so much more to share. This is also movable parts here. I've taken an image that um, from a textbook for my animal cell here and it's already labeled. So Amy, if you'll move one of those white text bo white boxes up there, if you leave this where the students can move the pieces, they could just move that box and then they're going to see the name. It's already labeled underneath it. So this is one of the benefits to setting the background. So what I've done here is I've created this and I've even created the word bank because if I'm a science teacher, if this is what I'm doing, I want my students to have to type the name of these items into the boxes so that they can start learning the spelling of it. So on the next slide, you'll see I've set the background. Nothing can be moved. And then in the directions, I've told the students to create text boxes in each of the label fields and type in the names of, so that way they can really start working on the spelling of each of those items as well. So there are some different things that you can do. They can change the font. They can make the text box bigger. Um, so this is just a little bit more advanced than some of the other examples that we showed. Yep, very cool. I love that. All right, let's okay. see where we're going next because you're right, we have so many so you many did, other things. And you did good driving there. Oh, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. You just want to keep driving? Because that might be the easiest way yeah, to do sure. it. Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's do it since it seems to be working right now. <clears throat> what do I do next? Go to the next. Oh, wait, the accessibility compliant text boxes. Do we want to talk about that real quick? Sharon asked about it and it's on the slide here. Brooke? Sorry, I was answering a question. That's okay. We've done that to each other several times. The accessibility, accessibility compliant. compliant text boxes. Tell us about that. Oh, okay. So um, something to really understand, um, Amy, if you'll add a slide using the plus sign in the left-hand corner. Okay. Instead of using the blank slide, use one that says uh, maybe the title in the body or, or the caption. Either one is fine. Okay. So you guys see these fancy boxes that already say click to add title and click to add text. You want to make sure that if you're adding text to any Google slide that you use these text boxes. If you have a student that you know is using one of the um, using like Chrome box um, or an automatic screen reader that they're not selecting to read the text because if you don't use these already programmed text boxes, what will happen is when it comes to it, the screen reader will just say text box. It won't actually read the text that's inside of it. Now, if they're using any of the extensions that are like select to read and they highlight the words, it's going to read it to them. But it's mainly for Chrome box and the, um, the built-in screen readers for our students for accessibility. All right, so if I want my students to be able to hear this description read aloud, then do I, how do I do that, Brooke? Um, do I well, right-click on this and no, go no, to this, alt text? No, it'll hear it because you use that box automatically. If okay. they're using Chrome box, then it will read it to them. Okay. Yep. What if I have a picture? So what if I have a picture in here? Can I set alt text on a picture? Yes, you can. All right, so if I look up my old standby, the blue bonnet, always safe, never any naked celebrities in there or anything, <laughs> if you type, <laughs> type in your state flower, um, and then I have a visually impaired student and I want that student to know what this is, then I can right click the picture and go to alt text and I can say this is a picture of a blue bonnet flower the state flower of Texas, right? And then my student who's using those accessibility tools, when they hover over this, it's going to tell them, it's going to, they're going to hear sound that says what I typed in alt text. This is a picture of a blue bonnet flower, the state flower of Texas. Yeah, I think you'd have to put it in the description spot, um, not in the title. There we go. There we go. Okay. Yep. There we go. So now they would hear that, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yep, uh, good point, that. Sharon, with a B and a B. Yeah, slash assassin. Watch out. It is out. an assassin. 
Yes, there we go. Assassins. All right. Mm -hmm. Cool. So somebody in the in the comments asked a question that I I know the answer to. I just want to make sure everybody hears the answer. So whenever you're adding the directions and you're using the gray space, you can use these text boxes. All you have to do is click on that where it says click to add title, for instance. Okay. Control C or yeah, select so like the yeah. whole box itself, control C, control V, or control D to duplicate. And now that text box is coded the right way. It will be read aloud. You can move it over to the sidebar and now you can type whatever you want and you can format it however you want. Mm -hmm. But the important part is because it was one of those pre-programmed text boxes, it's coded to be read right. aloud. It's a special box. It is a special box for a special lady. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Remind me where we're going from here. Well, and a few people probably want to hear what we just said again there, Jess. If you're working inside of Google, you can use Control D for duplicate. Instead of doing Control C, Control V, you can just do Control D to duplicate. That works control on. <laughs> control Z to unduplicate. Yes, because it's very, you want to, and every time you press and release it, it's going to make a new copy. So I, when I teach that, I try to remember to say that because a lot of people hold down control and press D and then they hold it down and then they have 50 billion of whatever it's it like is. like those cards from that old um, game, that old card game on the computers back in the day. What was that? Oh called? yeah. Solitaire. Solitaire. That's yeah. right. We're showing our age. Um, you know what? What's cool about Control D? It works on almost everything, including on the left on the slide deck over there. Yep. You can duplicate entire slides just by selecting it and hit Control D. There we go. Yeah. Jody, to get the text box that's readable, just add a new slide that has like some pre programmed slide um, text on it. And you can copy those text boxes and paste them in any slide you want. Yeah. So I could take this and I could do Control C. And I could put it onto this slide and do control V. And now that special text box that can be read aloud with a screen reader, I can use it on this slide, right? Yep. You can just yep. get them okay. from, yep. I can get them from another slide. Correct. As long as it's that special kind of box. Yep. Okay, cool. I, I learned that today. I was today years old. <laughs> I learned that. So that's really cool. Okay, so this is just a, we won't spend a ton of time on these. These are actually pretty simple to understand. These are examples of using Google Drawings in a similar way to how we've been using Google Slides in terms of adding elements and letting students interact. So if you click on any of those options, here's the folder full of them. Um, let's start with the vocab matchup. Okay. So this is um, just a picture of a cell that I got off the internet um, that was labeled for reuse. I definitely checked on that first. It's not and opening. Let me try oh, it over here. Well, it's a template. I did change it to template links. Oh, okay. So when our folks check on these, they'll be able to click on the use template feature awesome. in the upper right hand corner. And so um, this is going to give you a copy of our slide, I mean, uh, sorry, of our drawing. And so really, I put the directions at the top. Literally, what the students are going to do here is they're going to find the vocabulary word on the left side. It's over in the gray space, which let it load. It probably can show up in just a second. Hey, Uma, we're glad that you guys are happy about the biology stuff. We're not super comfortable <laughs> with it, but we know you guys like it. Also, um, when you do use template, if the person is not logged into the Chrome browser, it will spin and spin forever. So if it doesn't open up for you, you have to log into your Chrome browser. And you can oh, do point. that right up here to the left of your hot dogs. So there's these three dots in the top right. We call those hot dogs. Right just to the left of that, there's a little icon. It's probably your initial if you're in a school district. And then you can turn sync on right there or log in. And then it will let you have the template. Yep. So when you guys click on our links, it's going to give you a template. And that means you can make a copy of it. So Amy, if you'll scroll to the left a little bit. I know okay. it's kind of like big screen there. On the left, I've done just what we did in slides. I left some, some shapes in the left sidebar, and the students are going to click and drag them over to the part of the, of the drawing where the definition exists. So they need to know where the cell, whatever that one is, cell membrane, um, and I don't even know the answers to these because I mixed them all up. So you guys can use your imagination, but Amy, just drag that over the top of one of those boxes. All the biology teachers are probably dying inside right now. They are. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you guys. Yeah, I only have so much capacity. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I but chose this is... to learn technology stuff instead, okay? <laughs> we'll leave the biology teaching to the biology teachers. <laughs> but you guys understand, though. So now all I've done is insert a picture and some definitions on the drawing itself. And on the left, I put the words. And I could flip that. I could do the words on the 
drawing and the definitions on the left sidebar but anyway that we shape it the students are doing some interactivity they're clicking and dragging so it's just a little bit more interactive than just a worksheet or filling out a quiz I should have done these two first because I'm pretty sure I'm getting them right no sorry that one goes <laughs> down here this one I'm pretty sure I'm getting this right now yeah vocab review concept review pre-teaching post-teaching there's all kinds of activities that you could use this with um, the magnetic poetry this is something we've seen um, Gosh, there's a lots of examples out there. I just threw something together for you guys to take a look at, but it's just a picture that we found. So it's an inspiration picture, whatever the inspiration might be. Um, I've seen some history teachers, for instance, use some really funny political drawings or from cartoons and things. Uh, and then I just put some vocabulary words in boxes all around the drawing and the students have to write a poem inspired by the image. They have to use at least two of the vocabulary words that are from our list and then I left some blank cards in the bottom, some little shapes in the bottom left that they can click and drag their own. And what I did is I just layered a whole bunch of shapes on top of one another so for them it's just it looks like it's an unending supply of shapes. So they can just click and drag and then double click to add their own words. That's really cool. So the students can make their own little poem or they can make their own little story, whatever I want them to be doing. And then they have some options to maybe kind of customize that based on uh, their extra, extra words. You know what I just remembered <clears throat> last year, I made that inferencing lesson, mm -hmm. which could be completely taught online. Um, we should give that out on Monday when we do our Google classroom thing again, because I spent like hours on that and hardly anybody ever used it. Um, but it's a really good lesson and it could totally be online and it's kind of reminds me of this and it's about yeah. teaching inferencing which is really a hard thing to teach but it's got a lot of great pictures in there and all free you know like fair use all from pexels and stuff don't let me forget to do that okay hey somebody's asking about the shapes um, not having the white border can you just insert a new shape real quick so we can make sure everybody knows how to insert border so you just use the shape tool from the menu and you can pick any of those shapes and then um, notice how it comes in with like a blue background. That's the default. So you have options in the toolbar. The fill is the paint bucket. You can fill it whatever color. And then the pencil right next to the paint bucket is the, the outline tool. So you can choose whatever color you want. And then just to the right of that is how thick that line is. So that's how you can do that and make your shapes look however you'd like. And another thing you did, Jess, is you controlled the font because yes. Arial is not the right answer. That is no, not never. the correct font to use ever. Never. Yep. So how did you make the box endless? Uh, Katie, all I did was I literally just duplicated control D a whole bunch of those boxes and just stacked them on top of each other. Uh, there's a, there is actually an end to how many boxes are in that stack. The kids just can't see it. So that's really what I did. So can you, can I, can we show something real fast? Yes, do show them right. because they need to know this. Okay. Are you ready, Amy? Yes. Stay I'll on think that so. box <clears throat> that you're okay. on. Okay. All right. We're going to, Amy's going to follow my instructions here. I will. I swear. Okay, that picture is set to the background, right, Jess? So when she yes. selects it, oh, no. It's, okay. No, no, it's not the background. Um, Amy, you may want to move over to some gray space to do this then. Okay. Or even a blank drawing would even probably be best. All right. Do I need to take anything with me or just bring? Um, blank? Take that not Ariel be fine or a okay. blank white box. It doesn't matter. So she's going to control C one. to copy that little shape. <laughs> and then when she makes a new drawing, she can control V to paste. Yeah. All right. So we're about to be in a new one. Okay. And just so y'all know, it's 1029. Well, let's we'll keep going anyway. Stay. We'll I see mean, I, I want to know whatever. <laughs> I don't know what I'm about to learn, so I have to okay. stay. Okay. All right. So we're going to paste that box in. Control okay, V to paste. It's still loading. Okay. There we go. All right. So um, imagine this if it was shapes, the boxes, coins for math, anything. We're going to make a stack of them. So... Um, can you repeat that control D and make probably 50. Yeah, you, we're yeah. going to, um, you're going to make, use your control D to make about, I don't know, 10, 12 of them. I don't know, however many Say you Say the want. part you said about if it was for math, because. Okay, you, if you, you want, this up. is making a stack of anything. So maybe you want to make a stack of coins, a stack of letters, a stack of shapes. You're going to be making a stack. Okay. Okay, so do control D and make a set of them. Okay, now with your mouse over in the top left hand side, I want you to start drawing a box around all of those. You are basically creating an imaginary box, but what it does is it selects everything in its path. So right now all of those boxes are now selected. 
it, so now you have, instead of grouping them, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to arrange them to a stack. So go to arrange, and then you're going to align them in the center. And now go back to arrange and align to the top. Oh! And now you have a stack that the, that the kids can pull from. Oh, that'd be so great for coins. Yeah. Oh, or just yeah. numbers or you stacks or shapes. Play, yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. Those Word text arts. boxes that Jess used in the, a minute ago, this is the best way to do it. Yeah. Oh. If you want to have vocabulary words, use word art to make them. Mm -hmm. So they're just like image files and then you can do the same thing. Just stack them on top of each other. So you have all, you know, 10 of the word photosynthesis and they can put that in wherever it belongs. Mm. Hey, mind blown. All right. Yay. Right. That's super that was, cool. That was worth the extra minutes. Yeah. So, so yeah, so that's how I did that little stack of blank ones. And I just put in like 10 or 15 of them. And if they need more, they can always duplicate more. So there's so many other examples in here, but yeah. I know that we are out of time with y'all today, yeah. but please go back and look at the rest of them because there's just a lot of really great yeah, Amy, when you click here. on that examples, it's just a folder, guys, of Google Drawing examples. I put the same ones that Jess just opened and we talked about, so it's all in one folder. Great. So um, they're all view only, so all you have to do is file, make a copy if there's something in there that you would like to use or, or look at. Yes, very cool. Thank you guys so much for attending today. Here is that URL that we promised you. This is going to get you to the slide deck that we've been using today. We have been um, picking up templates from this and you can pick up your templates from this too. So it's fried.tech forward slash hands dash on dash learning. And I bet Jessica or Brooke will put that into the chat so that you will have that. And this video will go on YouTube as soon as we can get it processed. So it'll probably be, it's long, it's an hour, so it'll probably be a couple of hours before we can get it up, but then it will be on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash fried technology. So thank you guys so much for attending yeah. today and for sticking with us through this hard time. And we're sorry if we didn't get to all the questions that were so many and we were trying to yeah. demo. So we hope we got as many of them answered as we could. We appreciate you, you guys, guys being here. And you guys join us on Monday for that classroom yes. session because we'll be able to talk about how you assign some of this stuff in class and how you can man manage it. Exactly. And also, if you do have questions about this, go to the YouTube video and um, comment on that YouTube video. We have been, I think, doing a pretty good job of writing back to everybody who's asking questions on YouTube. So when you're watching the video, you'll have the comment underneath. So just tell us, you know, I'm looking at minute 12, 12 minutes, 15 seconds of the video, and I don't know how you did this or that or whatever. And um, as soon as we can, we'll get back to you and answer any questions that we missed. Thank you guys for coming today. Thanks, Have a great guys. day. Bye, you guys. Bye. Everybody stay safe and healthy. Yes.